Hi, I'm Karen with Biz Arts, and um, we're going to uh, work on a, a project that's going to take you a little bit of time, but is well worth the effort. It is a very, very large and um, I think very beautiful uh, paper mache bowl. Uh, there's nothing really particularly difficult about this project. Um, but it does take a lot of time because of the size and the need to um, create something that is very strong um, and uh, you know will be able to be usable. Uh, hopefully you purchased the pack of materials from us and you've gotten this very large um, balloon from us. And one of the things that um, I'm gonna really uh, suggest that if you have it, you take it out, um, and that's going to be a turntable, and you'll see why. Okay, so we're back with our big balloon. Uh, these balloons are very expensive. Um, they're made out of latex, so they're very strong. And the first couple of times I worked with them, I tied them off and then realized that I had created a one-use balloon. And given their cost, uh, I have started to tie them off with uh, hair elastics. I prefer them over the um, using a rubber band because they don't pull. And this way, when it comes time to deflate your balloon uh, and reveal your bowl, you don't have to pop it, but rather you can save it. So I'm setting um, the balloon into a very, very large pot, uh, which is sitting on top of an inexpensive plastic uh, turntable. Nothing too exciting about it. It doesn't have to be, you know, heavy duty. And I am looking for at the top of the balloon, a, there's kind of like a little belly button and I'm going to set it into my bowl and I'm going to eyeball it so that it is sitting pretty much straight up. And then this is something that I learned after creating an incredibly lopsided bowl the first time is you're going to take a Sharpie or another permanent marker and holding your, uh, your marker very tight in so that your arm isn't wobbling around. Uh, put it up against the balloon and you're gonna start spinning it. Try not to uh, move your arm so that you get a nice uh, line around your balloon, like so. This uh, will help you uh, to keep your edge straight uh, if the, this moves around, you will end up creating, frankly, just something that's lopsided, but worse than that, that you're going to use up material and time that you really don't need to use up. So now we're going to get started with our paper mache. Before we can start paper mache, we need to make paper mache paste. Now you could use a commercial grade glue and water it down a little bit. Um, that's very expensive and it's tough on your hands and sticky. Um, we've been, I've been making my own. It is incredibly simple. The recipe is on the uh, written instructions that are included in the material box uh, and should be at the beginning of this video. It is a half a cup of flour, three tablespoons of sugar, two cups of cold water, and two cups of water that you're going to bring to a boil. While you bring your two cups of water to a boil, you're going to whisk your half a cup of flour into your cold water. And then when you have a nice boil going, you're going to add the cold water flour mixture to your boiling water. It will start to thicken right away. And for those of you who cook, you'll be familiar with the concept of it coats the back of your spoon. You're looking for a nice, thick, viscous uh, liquid. And as soon as it comes back to boil, 
Give it one minute stirring constantly and then take it off of the heat. You're going to add the three tablespoons of sugar, stir well, and then let it cool off so that you can use it in a few minutes whenever you're comfortable with the temperature to work with. So you're going to need to do between five and six uh, layers of paper mache uh, to create a bowl that is going to be sturdy enough that it doesn't warp. And after you've drawn your circle and you've made your paste, you're ready to begin. Now, this is a lot of paper mache and so you, uh, it's easy to get track of how many layers you've done. Uh, I happen to be fortunate. I have newspaper, I have white craft paper, and I have brown craft paper. So I uh, alternate layers. I also use a post-it note. And when I finish one layer, because I actually have um, quite a few of these going at one time, I will make a sign, I will stick it on the balloon, and then when it's time to put the next one on, then I'll keep moving through. So uh, I've made my paper mache paste, and I'm going to uh, begin my first layer, and I'm going to dip it in the paper mache paste. I actually like putting it on my hands, and then I'm going to line it up with the, what's going to be the edge of my bowl. And I am going to start going around, making sure that I overlap. Does it have to be perfect? No. Uh, it, remember that this first layer is going to be the inside of your bowl. So you want to spend some time making sure that you don't have a lot of wrinkles. And because we're going to be working so many layers, uh, you know, you're going to have a chance to fill in. Uh, what will happen is I will now do this whole, uh, the whole balloon. And on the next go around, not only will I switch colors of paper, but I'm going to start going in a different direction. This too helps strengthen your bowl. So as I continue to work on um, the paper mache of the balloon, it's a good time for me to give you some helpful hints and talk to you about what I've learned uh, since beginning uh, my paper mache career. I used to be a ceramic artist, so I've always been really into bowls and uh, beautiful things. So this is kind of fun for me uh, since uh, I don't really have the patience um, or the strength anymore to do uh, ceramics. So uh, don't give in to the temptation to put huge pieces of paper on your balloon to make things go faster. The reason being, that it's harder to get a nice smooth surface and the work now uh, in uh, adding smaller pieces, making sure that uh, you're, you do a good job laying them down is gonna be well worth it in the long run when you don't have lots of bumps. Uh, and then uh, secondly is drying. So, the paper mache paste that we've made is, you know, natural ingredients. There are no chemicals in it. Uh, you can eat it, I don't know why. But um, so you're gonna notice if it hangs around for a little while, that it's gonna kind of start to smell a little yeasty. You will know when it goes bad. I haven't had any problems keeping it in a, I keep it in a Tupperware container. Uh, one recipe makes about enough, a little more than this one container. And it stays for, I think I made these this on Sunday morning. And uh, so it's been a couple of days. And so, you know, but again, you will know when it goes bad. It also will start to kind of separate. So uh, watch for that. You can certainly keep it in the refrigerator. Some people really like working 
uh, with it very fluid, others uh, a little stiffer. I kind of like to work with it a little stiffer. The next important thing is don't go overboard on your paper mache paste. This was a, uh, something that I did. So I'm pulling, you'll notice, the paper between my fingers and I'm getting the excess paper mache paste off. Again, the reason is it adds to the drying time and because the paste itself will create bumps and somewhat bubbles in your bowl. So uh, again, you want it wet, not to the point where it's falling apart and you wanna remove all of the visible uh, little globs of paper mache paste um, as you're working. So I'm going to keep working and I'll be back uh, with uh, when we're ready to do layer two. Okay, so through the magic of uh, having doing multiples of these, um, this bowl, um, paper mache bowl, is ready for the next step. You can hear how hard it is. It has had four really solid coats of paper mache. And um, in the course of working on these big bowls, um, I found that what worked best was to think about doing um, some of the last coats when it's off of the balloon so that you can deal with the, um, the rim. So, um, at this stage, instead of doing coat number five of paper mache with um, craft paper or newspapers, um, I am going to think about doing, uh, using the uh, finish or the paper that I want to be on the outside of the bowl. So uh, it could really be anything. It could be more newspaper. It could be craft paper. In this particular instance, um, because I'm gonna be doing a light interior treatment, I've taken regular old uh, construct, black construction paper and I have um, taken acrylic paint and a very cheap chip brush, uh, which will be included in your materials kit. And, and I've just made a design on here and then these I tear up. Now, uh, be, one of the other reasons that I can move to uh, this last coat at this point is because a bowl this large is gonna be varnished rather than being Mod Podge. Varnish is considerably stronger than Mod Podge and so that will add an additional uh, coat onto it. So as I was saying, you know, your bowl can be decorated however you see fit. These are some early iterations of bowls. Uh, inside it says, sorry, you're cutting out. This was a page from the New York Times weekend section, very pretty paper and I really liked it. It was about being uh, taken over by Zoom, uh, you know, during this period of the pandemic. So this is another bowl that I did. It has a painted back and the interior is kind of an ode to Matisse using uh, plain construction paper, cutting out shapes, gluing them down, and then Mod Podging. Uh, so you can buy all kinds of patterns. Uh, gift wrap is a great thing to uh, look for. Um, that's what this is. Uh, if you get a materials kit from us, it's going to have a wide assortment of decorative papers. But the thing that I like doing the most is making my own paper for, uh, for these bowls. And again, all I've done is using, this is yellow uh, construction paper, is to paint it with watercolors, stippling, using a lot of, uh, lots of layers and creating my own papers to use. So at this point, I'm not really looking to use a tremendous amount of paste uh, to attach onto. Also, construction paper is actually kind of a pretty loose weave. So in this instance, I'm taking the paper mache paste and I'm gonna kind of 
paint it on and take my construction paper and I'm just gonna paint, I'm gonna, the same way that I did with my um, paper mache strips earlier, I'm just gonna keep um, adding until my entire bowl is covered. So uh, here we go. This one will take a long time because it's quite a large bowl. And again, not a huge amount of um, paste being used. Uh, one of the reasons that I'm not doing more than six coats on this particular bowl is that I know that I'm gonna varnish this bowl. And varnish is much, much, much stronger than Mod Podge is, and that really will give um, it the strength of an extra layer. So in the end, this is going to have four regular, one outside and inside for six, and then varnish, which really will act as a seventh, almost eighth uh, coating on here. So I'm gonna keep going and then we'll uh, deflate the balloon and talk about what comes next. Okay, so um, here is um, the bowl uh, with its outside done. And you will notice that I have not gone all the way uh, to the edge. And the reason being is that after this dries and I deflate the balloon, I wanna be able to uh, do my inside treatment, wrap over the edge, and then I will come back um, and complete uh, the, um, the outside. That way I'm gonna have a rolled, nice and smooth edge. So this is gonna dry quite a bit, um, and then we will be ready to talk about the inside of the bowl. Okay, so my bottom is nice and hard, and I have um, very carefully gone and taken my fingers and kind of separated, because there's um, paste, and I've kind of gone around and I'm going to separate the balloon um, at the top where it may have attached to um, to the uh, to your paper mache bowl so uh, I'm gonna fingers crossed and so I've gone all around and uh, you're gonna hear like a crackling noise. And now I'm going to, this one was not one of the ones that I, um, I put in a hair elastic into, but I'm gonna try to uh, take it out um, and save the balloon. Here goes nothing. I can hear it starting to deflate. And you might hear kind of like a crinkling noise as the balloon starts to really separate um, from the inside. Okay, and uh, so now I'm gonna get ready to add another um, interior layer and finish off the top. Okay, so the first thing that I'm gonna do is to um, cut off uh, the excess where the, um, the outside, the last couple of layers are uh, passed. So just using a sharp pair of scissors, you're gonna come down to, you're gonna be able to see that nice dark line that you put in on the balloon because it will have transferred uh, to your um, to your paper mache. And the reason that we're going to do this is that um, we're going to now start going uh, using uh, paper mache, uh, just like we have for the last couple of times. We're going to um, be going over. Um, and doing one more layer. And so um, what we wanna do is, 
first of all, we don't want to use a huge amount of paste. And what we're going to try to do is we're going to try to go over the edge without going onto the black if we can. And so um, I'm going to go around the whole side. I'm going to do two coats and that's going to stiffen the edge and give us um, something that's nice and smooth. So I'm going to go ahead and do that now. When we left off, I had uh, brought my outside treatment uh, most of the way up. I was a little concerned, um, even though I had six uh, layers going, I wasn't really quite happy. So uh, you'll remember when we first started making this bowl, my first uh, layer was uh, brown. I decided to do another layer of white and I wrapped it. And now I'm ready to start working on my, the interior design. So, um, as I said, the inside and outside of your bowl can really be as you choose uh, because I want to cover as many different treatments as possible. I um, am doing this one with uh, material. And so I have, um, I have three different um, materials. One is... Um, recipes and kind of cooking. Uh, I have a small red uh, polka dot and then I have a large. And I am starting to, I've started to work and you'll notice that, and again, I'm going to take this finished inside uh, material and I'm going over because at the very end, I'm going to come back and I'm going to, with my black handmade paper that I made out of construction paper, I'm going to uh, go and, uh, and, you know, fill, like make my, my outside look nice and even. So uh, at this point, uh, when you're working with fabric, a couple of things, uh, it's a great way to use up scrap material. Uh, if you have pinking shears, it's nice uh, to pink the outside. You are gonna be sealing this uh, with both Mod Podge and then with a layer of varnish. Um, it just helps uh, your material not fray when you're working at it so that you don't get like those pesky little pieces of threads uh, you know, in your work. So I'm gonna keep working, finish the inside of this uh, bowl, and then we'll be back to finish the outside. Okay, so I've been letting the inside of the bowl that I've been working on set up for about an hour. This is the inside, and I have begun working on the outside of the bowl, and I'm just about finished covering it. You wanna make sure, again, just keep in mind the regular rules of paper mache overlap, not too much glue and press. Now this time, because this has been worked on a lot today, I'm not just pressing, I'm actually putting my fingers when I'm pressing this down and I'm using my, the finger that's on the inside of my bowl um, as some additional support so that I can really press that edge in. Um, if I go over a little bit, I will trim that once, um, I finish this, I don't have much left to go. Um, I'm going to uh, give the inside a coat of Mod Podge, and then I'm gonna walk away from it for um, probably until tomorrow uh, overnight at, before I start um, adding any varnish. So we're ready to um, finish up our bowls with varnish if you purchase the materials from us, uh, you're gonna get varnish, probably enough to do uh, two or two bowls at least. Uh, varnish is very, very thin and it's clear. And you wanna do nice, long strokes. I strongly recommend that you raise your bowl uh, so that it's not sitting on anything as you are varnishing because 
Uh, like I said, it's a very thin liquid and uh, it will adhere itself to, um, to whatever it's sitting on. And you don't want to build up, uh, you know, heavy coats at one time. Again, uh, you know, nice thin coats. Uh, on something like this, you're not really going to be seeing brush strokes. And you're going to want to let this dry absolutely a um, couple of hours. It shouldn't be tacky at all. Um, it should feel absolutely dry to the touch. And you can keep, um, if you're not happy with how strong your bowl feels, for lack of a better term, um, you can keep adding varnish. Um, I wouldn't go maybe more than three or four coats, but if you do them thin and you let them dry in between, you won't get that milky buildup. Last thing is if you did not buy materials from us, you're gonna wanna use a art varnish, not something that's made for floors. And I strongly encourage that you um, buy a water-based varnish so that you don't pass out from, uh, from the fumes. And that's it for our bowl project. Uh, I hope you had a great time. Send me pictures of your finished bowls. Um, and if you want to look at more videos and more classes, www.vizartcenter.org.